Large metal tube with narrowed front end. Transported with police escort. Oh, oh. On an extended flatbed trailer. That looks like a turbo. No, it's not regular. There's little portholes too. Hey, this looks like a mold. This looks like a mold for an airplane. Like inverted. Because <laughs> it's way too solid to be the actual airplane. But uh, let's see what the answer is. Willing to bet that's a spindle that Boeing weaves the carbon fiber fuselage for the Dreamliner on. Ah, there we go. Note the outlines, punch outs for windows and doors. So that's how they make carbon fiber stuff. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Gold spherical items with colored enamel. Very cool, very pretty, could look kind of like apples. But once you get to the top, it's more strawberry-y or like solid fruit-y. I don't know, let's see what we got. They appear to be peaches. Oh, okay, yeah, I see it. In Chinese symbolism, the peach is often a symbol of longevity and given as a wish for a long life. These son fruits are just small ornaments shared as gifts or sold as tourist items and or in import stores. Apples and pears are also common. Hey, I was in the right vein. A wooden box with glass window, approximately eight inches tall, has a wooden flap on a hinge covering the glass. The back has a large round hole. Okay, uh, I'm going with, I'm, I'm gonna play these as a guessing game. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, I'm going with the shadow box or some kind of tip or display jar or something like that for a countertop. Uh, let, let's see what we got here. Uh, this looks more like the housing for an old clock. Huh, but with the actual clock mechanism removed. The glass at the back was most likely there so you could see the movement of the clock. The round opening at the front would be an indication that this was a clock face. Ah, I had it backwards. Yep, case for an old brass carriage clock. All right, I'm not gonna give myself a hard time on that because we were looking at it all backwards. Approximately 3.5 foot long metal cylinder with a handle found in woods of a park. <laughs> Sorry. You pulled a 3.5 foot long metal cylinder out of park? Uh, diameter a bit un under a foot. What is this thing? Okay, this is gonna sound really weird, but uh, I'm going with actually antenna because this looks like uh, it's the wrong wavelength. <laughs> Because it's way too thick, but this looks kind of like the antennas that they use to se test cell phone signals, or at least they used to. Uh, they're probably much smaller now. But they used to be mounted on top of pickup trucks. Uh, you'd see them driving around uh, service areas. Case to hold survey equipment. It seems most likely it is a carrying case of some sort, of what there may not be enough information. Oh, uh, okay. User each niche. Thought maybe a ventilation duct hose case. And user uh, Arblux, Arblux suggested a power moon light case. Both of these seem like a possibility to me, but due to the lack, la lack of any numbering, lettering, labeling, I'm not sure we'll ever know. It's absolutely a carryable thing for holding other things inside. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna call the mystery solved there. It's just, it's a carryable thing for carrying other things inside. It seems to be made uh, from 10 inch ductwork and quite well made at that. Could also be a chamber for steaming wood, but I would expect to see uh, something for latching the lid on both sides of the open end, not just the one. Yeah, I'd, I'd be really curious to look inside, but I also, I also don't really want to look inside. What is this thing? Big metal rack. Looks like for retail use. Metal peg slots on the side, wheels on bottom. Nothing is retractable or detachable found on the side of the road. I'm gonna go with automotive just based off the off the colors. I do like that they're rolling at home as a, as a coat rack. Uh, but let's see, uh, I think it is missing the removable shelves. Something like this and a link. I think the metal colored vertical bars are just for decoration. They might match neighboring units that do have bars for hanging clothes. Oh, okay, this unit was probably for holding folded clothes on shelves like t-shirts. That's an industrial looking store. I, I dig the style. Okay, I see, I see, I see now in the demo image uh, how it's supposed to look. I still, I still dig the, the bright yellow. Pen uh, with metal balls with numbers next to where the balls drop in. Some balls are gray found in attic. What? Is it, does it change out the tip or something? Ah, oh, that, that, it just looks cool. I have no idea what this is for. Yeah, absolutely no idea, but uh, now I wanna know. About seven balls have a different color. Uh, maybe it's a random generator to suggest numbers you fill in a lottery ticket, e.g. six plus one out of 49. And a post about a similar pen, lotto pen. Huh, Diane gave me this many years ago. If you print point 
the writing end up, all the balls move to an open area. Shake, put the ball point down, and the lottery picks show up in the window. Taken uh, for the Macro Mondays group theme of numbers. That's very cool. I'm not entirely sure how random your uh, your numbers are going to actually be, but humans are notoriously bad at actually picking random numbers, so that's that's a really good you know step in the right direction. What is this object I found on a beach in Yorkshire that has holes in and feels like a mix between stone and plastic? Uh, the looks like a very tiny spatula. I'm assuming that's like a broken piece of something else, like much larger than that, because that that doesn't look like the entire thing. Uh, let's let's see if if Reddit has solved it. it Goes sound weird, but please touch your tongue to it. If it feels like your tongue slightly sticks to it, it's gonna be made of bone. Absolutely, 100% bone. Thank you. Oh, okay. So it's 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 a bone thing. Bone, old toothbrush? What? Victorian seems right. Thank you all so much. This is definitely it. Never crossed my mind that it could be this, but I'm now the proud owner of uh, Victorian's toothbrush and couldn't be more fascinated. Solved. That's really cool. Oh, the, this entire subreddit is full of nerds and I absolutely love it. Oh, this is the kind of internet content we need more of. Bone toothbrush... Toothbrushes. Oh my, what? What the? I don't even want to know how that works, but um, bone toothbrush. Oh, bristles are missing. Oh, I get it now. The holes are where the, okay, all right. This is genuinely fun. This is just genuinely fascinating. I realize I'm violently nerdy, but y'all should have figured that out by now. This is your fault if you were expecting anything else. I see these weird metal boxes in UK pubs down by the bar. And other than impromptu chewing gum bins, what the heck are they? Uh, I'm doing my usual guess thing. Spittoons? Maybe? Or ashtrays? It's an ashtray! Now a bin since the smoking ban. Yep, there we go. As a 40 year old, it's amusing to me that there are now a generation of drinkers who don't recognize big pub ashtrays. And before that, uh, they were spittoons. Yeah, haha, I was doubly right. I only know this because there's, uh, there's a lot of buildings in New York that have ashtrays and things built into surfaces, especially like large public areas. There's a lot of hotel lobbies that would have uh, ashtrays built into like marble countertops and things like that around the perimeter because it would be like a large gathering area and people would just smoke in the hotel lobby. And some of them are like, you know, don't smoke kids, but the uh, but the work, like the actual metalwork of the ashtrays is just really beautiful and fascinating. These are found on street corners in Daytona Beach. Huh, I've been there many times. Uh, they appear to just pump water up only for it to go immediately to the storm drain. I have seen a few different designs. Uh, I'm guessing that's a sump pump or a lift, st or, and that's small for a lift station. And sump pumps usually go to sewage. I don't know, let, let, let's, let's see. They're timed valves to keep the water in the distribution lines from getting too old. When the water is in the pipe too long, the chlorine level drops too much and the water is unsafe. Oh, source, I run water plants. Interesting. I grew up a little farther north, uh, right around the Florida Georgia line, and most of our homes were wells. So I don't think we had city water, but like once, the rest of the time it was all well water. Metal spring clamp item, about six inches long, possible medical clamp or spreader. Metal ring slides down to close the legs. Yeah, I'm going with medical as well, although it does look kind of like those uh, snap ring closers. But let's let's see what the answer. It's a spring retractor. Once you've made an incision in the chest, uh, for th thoratic surgery, uh, you use this to hold the incision open. Uh, I've seen something similar called an uh, a spring retractor. Ugh. Okay, cool. Very cool. I'm glad you. I'm glad you know. Uh, anyways, next most handheld tool with wooden handle and hook like scraper with an open metal pouch. Uh, this almost looks like some sort of weird pipe. Handheld tool with wooden handle. I'm sorry. I'm still curious. I'm trying to figure this out. I would assume like drill a hole with the top thing and then scrape something out with the bottom. Uh, all right. Let, let's see what we've got. It's a tool for an art known as batik. You fill the cup with molten wax and it drips out of the spout. Oh, using that, you make patterns on a fabric and then dye the fabric. The dye doesn't stain the fabric where the wax has been applied. Oh, that's cool. Once you finish the dyeing, you iron the wax between sheets of a material that absorbs the wax. We used to do it at school. You went to a cool school. I also just looked it up and it's just, it's really cool. You'll also recognize it. 
if you just Google image search batik, hopefully I'm pronouncing that, but yeah, you, you'll recognize what, what the look is. This looks cast. Not sure if it's aluminum, but it's light. I have a picture with my hand for size comparison. It was bought from a kitchen section at an estate sale and no one knew what it was for there. Sorry, and no one knew what it was for there. There's a divot in the center of the shape, but no markings anywhere. That looks like a, a bed warmer. I think you would put hot coals in the middle and you would close this and you would put it into the bed and it would uh, warm the bed. It does look really small though. So uh, it might also be for like cooking. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is the light and mighty lemon squeeze press. I was so off. It was a bar utensil in the eighties. Yeah, I had no sense of scale. I guess the wood grain should have given it away that it was much smaller than I was thinking. I guess that would be way easier to manufacture than the, like a center post. And you know, much more durable than a plastic one. I'm at the point where like, I don't even care if I get these right. I'm just fascinated to learn this stuff. Solid feeling balls. <laughs> Look, I went past the pen ball one, but solid feeling balls. Phrasing. Uh, anyways, uh, that chime and jingle at a low tone when you shake them. Oh, those look like meditation ball. I don't know sure what they're actually called, but they used to sell them in St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, the stress balls. Bowing balls. Uh, they're for stress and concentration, I think. Yep. I always liked them, but I, I never really had a justification for them. And they would have used up like double my allowance and uh, like... I just, I, I never got around to getting them. Now I kind of want to hear them again because they sound really pretty. What's this peeled silver sheet thing inside my microwave? Oh, oh, that's the covering for what's called the magnetron. It's the angry thing that flips your food's uh, water molecules back and forth. Uh, it should not be punctured. I'm not sure about this. I'm genuinely not sure about the safety of that. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, waveguide cover. No harm in, in it as it is, but they're cheap to replace. OP, this is the answer. However, I would recommend replacing it. It is designed to prevent the microwave radiation broadcasted, broadcasted by the magnetron back into the machine compartment. Oh, where the magnetron resides and uh, potentially damaging it or another component. Edit after further research and other comments. The cover does protect the antenna from grease, water, and food particles in addition to allow even distribution of microwave radiation to the food. Uh, thanks for the other comments. For clarification, always learning. This is more of what the internet should be. I'm not gonna soapbox about this too long, but just people are just like, oh, hey, and here's an additional you know, piece of information and you just, you soak it all up. Neil deGrasse Tyson can be, you know, kind of, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson sometimes, but he did say something once that I really liked is just like, when you get something wrong, it's better than getting something right. Because if you get something wrong and you know you're wrong and you know what the right answer is, you've now learned something. That's not something the person who's always right can say. But that does make sense that microwaves could bounce around the inside of the microwave and go back and cook your electronics. Uh, but I'd be more, honestly more worried about, uh, you know, exploding pasta, you know, pasta sauce or you know, chicken fat or stuff like that, that that tends to splatter. Even if you've got a paper towel, it could, you could get through there and, and uh, electronics don't like that kind of stuff. Wooden frames with holes at the end of a slide. Some of this stuff reads like riddles. Um, oh, that looks cool. Slicer? Maybe? No, maybe a slicer. It looks like it's supposed to roll. This looks like a, this looks like a really cool marble puzzle. Uh, I got no idea what we got from the comments. From Alabama. And three of them? I'm going to guess it was used in some way for tobacco. Oh, putting a bundle through the hole and lop off. Yes, the, the stems and tie them up. I can't see a way to use it for cotton. Yeah, no, that that's that makes much more sense. What are these smaller doors inside our hotel bathroom door? How old is that? Okay, I'm, I'm taking a wild guess here, but I there used to be sort of ventilation, quote unquote ventilation systems in, in, ho in homes that were built without air conditioning where you could open a lower door to let in cooler air. Uh, when it was hot or if it was, you know, in the winter, you could open an upper upper door to let in warm air while still having, you know, some privacy. Uh, outside of that, there's also attendant style doors, but I don't, I don't think that is what this is, but let's see here. Uh, while many are saying Dutch door, uh, this is actually called a wicket. A Dutch door has a separate top and bottom half. Yeah, that's like the attendant doors open together independently. A wicket is a door or two in this case inside of a door. They're used mainly in psych ward as a way to get into a room that may be barricaded. Never mind. Yeah, I guess the top one isn't all the way to the top. But yeah, if if in in some 
older homes, New England area, I've seen a few of the, these. Sometimes you'll see them over the top of the door frame and stuff like that to uh, to let airflow pass through while still having privacy. But uh, now you know where your hotel what your hotel used to be. Although that doesn't really look like built out or super durable. I'm not sure. Small fragment cuboid from Morocco. Thought thinking it was soap. Is it solid? Is it like I need more information on this? Like marble or something? It might just be solid perfume. Ah, huh. you just rub it on your skin. This or leave in your car as air freshener. Huh. I, I, yeah, I guess it's just like really you know, hyper fragrant deodorant without the actual deodorizing effect. I'm curious. Now I want to smell it. Solid metal removable spike in a New York hotel bathroom. Ah, uh, uh, huh, huh, that, that, that's a, that's a murder weapon. Um, drain stop. Oh, I am so curious now. Vase for a single flower. Oh, that'd be pretty. Uh, aka okay, bud vase. Makes sense to have it removable so you can dump it out and refill with water. They have it built in? Also a theft deterrent. Since it's not very useful as a bud vase if you don't have a hole for your table. Oh, I'm curious as to why they designed it so that it could be used as a very effective weapon. <laughs> yes, it doesn't need to be so darn pointy. Yeah, no, you could just make it uneven. Like you could slope it and have a sloped base and put the, I don't know, but I've also seen stuff that's used in decoration of New York hotels that, that look like a danger to the occupant. There's a bunch of pictures in the Edison Hotel lobby. Uh, like they're like Polaroids framed in glass with binder clips just hanging above you. And I'm sure they're glued or something like that, but they just, you just look up and see a bunch of panes of, you know, frame glass, which is just shatters into billions of pieces. And you just move a little to the right. What is this ceramic device that is big enough to hold a bar of soap? It has a rectangle hole that goes through the bottom. It was located next to the bathroom items like toothbrush holder and liquid soap dispenser. The parts around the rectangle hole seem to form stairs, not just flat space between. Uh, uh that actually looks like a dispenser of some sort. It, it looks like they're out of something that would normally be there, like tissues or something like that. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. It's an old holder for a cell phone while you were charging it. Flip phones would sit in it like a chair and the plug went through the bottom. Really? This must have been rich people stuff because like, was not something I, I ever saw. The way the phone sits in it in the product photo is unsettling. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I, I, I think this is for like a different kind of phone, like the uh, StarTech, I think, or for, I forget, the, the, you know, the ones from the 90s shows. I don't think for, they're for the the newer Gallic, like, you know, touchscreen phones. Older Blackberries, brick phones, Nokia, stuff like that. What is this fan looking spinner thing? Are those LEDs on the edges? That, uh, I can't tell. There are some of these that, that light up with like letters and stuff, but uh, I don't think those are LEDs. I think this is just like a very floppy fan. Uh, let's see what we got. Two keep flies off food. I have several. Great for dining outside as your hand can easily stop the blades to reach under them. Oh, okay, so it does actually spin. It's like a fan, but just with really heavy floppy blades. Just really annoying for flies. I like that. That's one of the reasons I don't like eating outside in picnics is bugs. Two steps found at every playground in town. For accessibility? Yeah, I'm going with accessibility on this. This looks like the right height for possibly moving in and out of motion assistive stuff. Um, Especially with the grab handles. Yeah, that's that's definitely for, for something. Let's see what we've got. Uh, a stop on an exercise circuit. Huh? There there may be other cardio type apparatuses within a hundred yards or so. No, it's for handicapped accessibility. Ah, step tests are a single step and don't use rails. Yeah, the, that was what I thought. I was like, you could kind of do it for aerobics, but the, the handrails could be a trip hazard if you're using it for that. Uh, there's a link. I'm looking at an image of that link, so I'm not going to click on it, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. You're right, and thank you. This is like the good side of the internet. I love this. What is this tube that this Coast Guard guy sticks his gun into while loading it? Oh, uh, huh. I wonder if he keeps it dry or, or it prevents accidental discharge because like he's on a do dock right now, but like they might be at sea. I'm curious. Let's see what we've got. In the army, we called it a cleaning station. Oh, clearing station. Oh, yeah. If you were to have an unintended discharge, there we go. While clearing the weapon, that chamber would stop the bullet. Yeah, 100% a clearing barrel. And like that other dude said, you are, uh, <clears throat> fracked if you have a non-intentional discharge into one. Saw a dude get an article 15 for putting a blank into one. All right, are you saying you'll get into trouble if you like intent, like if you use it as a trigger checker? <laughs> 
like instead of clearing the uh, the clearing a weapon is making sure that there's not a round in the chamber. So uh, if you if you have a round in the chamber, the the gun is considered dangerous. Uh, but uh, the kind of safety maxim uh, for handling firearms is every gun is always loaded, especially the one you just cleared. Just kind of getting you into the mentality of every gun is always you know loaded. But to to clear a chamber, you pull the slide back and you can look down and you will see whether or not there's a round in the chamber. I'm not sure what ND means. Maybe it means something else. Uh, I would assume that if you're at sea or if this is like on a boat and you're swinging around and you accidentally fire into one because you're on a boat and things are swinging around, you should, wouldn't get in trouble. But I, I don't know. <laughs> Because the first guy said it was while it was loading. I don't know. I'm really curious about this now. Bought a jean jacket at Target. Then felt a ball of some kind sewn into the lining. Cut the lining and found this really lightweight, velvety soft ball with a slight groove in the top third that I couldn't crush in my hand. What is that? Whoa, it looks like aerogel almost. I think I see a square outline, like a ridge. I see where that top third you were talking about. Uh, that could be an antenna for anti-theft, uh, for inventory control, uh, because all you technically need is a wire that vibrates at a specific frequency. But let, let's see over here. Humus stone for your stone washed jeans. Probably wasn't supposed to go home with you. Oh, it's definitely not humus stone, and I have a hard time imagining it being used for the brace of properties, unless it's at the end of its life and worn smooth. I have one of those. It doesn't really, really, the outside feels very soft. And while it's a solid object that I can't crush with my hand, it does give a very slight squish. Not pumice, pu pumice, uh, but a foam alternative to pumice uh, for the stone wash process. Oh, there are countless of materials used to achieve varying levels of effect. Oh, huh, very cool. A closed glass cylinder filled with a clear liquid. <laughs> I swear some of these sound like riddles. 20 centimeters long, four centimeters wide. Found at the bottom of a lake in Stockholm. <laughs> this, this, this was the right one to pull the voice out for. It was overgrown with algae on the outside. Nothing grows on the inside, so the liquid is not water. No markings. It is straight, and the bubble is too big to come from a spirit level. Oh, that is weird looking. What, what is that? <laughs> you said it was glass? Ah, uh, yeah, the top looks like... Sorry, the bottom of that is usually where the top is. That usually it's sealed off by, by heat. Uh, let's see. I suspect it is a storm glass. Yep. I have one that is almost identical to this. Over years, and particularly if shaken, the liquid inside will become slightly cloudy and with a yellowish tinge. The point at the end is to hold it in a wooden ba base, which would normally be carved to fit it. It even looks like there are some possible black flecks that could have been writing. They will often have instructions on how to read them printed on the glass. Okay, I, I, I've heard of these, but I've never actually seen one. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it's uh, camphor, nitrate of potassium, and sal- uh, Oh my god. Stuff I can't pronounce dissolved by alcohol with water, which is why it looks kind of kind of like a, a spirit level, but not quite. Apparently, they have a roughly 50-50 chance of being correct, but they're basically a simplified barometer uh, and will will let you know if it are supposed to let you know if a storm is coming, which to a certain extent can be true. Like if you get a, a low pressure, usually that's a sign that, that a front could be coming through and uh, usually you get bad storms around that. But, you know, that's not always the case. Bought a house with this glass structure in the backyard. No idea what it's supposed to be. That looks like a bird habitat, maybe. It'd be really hot. A vertical greenhouse or something? Or for a snake. Oh, it might be for a snake, because this then it'd be warm and stuff. I don't know, let's see. It's to grow mushrooms. Oh, it was outdoor, outdoor greens. It called, called a fruiting house. It looks like there is even substrate there that you use in growing mushrooms. Oh, there you go. Yellowish powder on the inside of swimming suit. That looks like the fo or the neoprene starting to, to break down. I think chlorine can do that. There's also types of spandex that will, uh, that will are basically just a bunch of tiny little fibers and they will break and begin to hill and sort of ravel upwards almost. Uh, you can see if you like accidentally uh, run hose or like tights past Velcro, it does a number on them. It does kind of like this. And uh, let's see what the answer is. The stretchy part of the fabric is degrading. Yay. N not good, but but I was right. <laughs> and poking through. Can't be fixed. Uh, time for a new swimsuit. Hey, go shopping now. They're probably on clearance. This is about three feet tall. Tall, I'm guessing. Uh, made of solid wood. It doesn't weigh much though. Maybe five or 10 pounds. The arm hanging down swings and the top 
is just a handle. It does not move. What in the... Okay, definitely hold on to the two handles and, and do something close to the ground. A pipe or something? No, that wouldn't be strong enough. What is... Boot puller. Dang it, I knew this one. Most elaborate boot puller I have seen, but a boot puller nonetheless. Is that like for boot stretching or hang on i gotta look this up because pulling my boot is like oh it's oh it's to pull the boot off oh oh, oh so, so as not to damage the tip of the other boot oh i'm just really hard in my boots and i just go at it that being said like i either wear combat boots that can put up with that or nearly knee-high like goth boots with a bunch of buckles and stuff that uh, you're not gonna get those off without undoing the zippers heavy object about 10 kilograms 35 centimeters tall, 25 centimeters wide at top side. Found in the Netherlands. That that looks like the world's most cursed tanning bed. Are those actually mirrors or are they just super shiny? I can't tell. The only other thing I can think of would be like sundial, not sundial, but like light reflector of some sort, but we got an answer. Let's see what we got. I have one just like this at work. It's very old and meant to use in production photography. Ah, so lighting for printing works. With this tool, you can make a readable negative for use in printing instead of an unreadable negative a camera normally would produce, if that makes sense. So, so a, 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 a more detailed or clear negative? I have failed to find uh, the proper English term for it, but in Dutch, it's called a Dachkant Spiegel. They were very expensive since they needed to be aligned perfectly. Yeah, I thought there was something up at the alignment, but just for fun, you can look into the center of the mirrors. Just for fun, uh, you can look into the center of the mirrors and see yourself like others see you. The image is flipped. Oh, pro product photography, not production photography. I understand the meaning now. So this is for taking pictures of products. This is this is very early uh, instead of I'm going to take a picture of my item to put up on eBay. I'm going to take a picture of my item to put in the newspaper. What are these small bowls with holes in the bottom? I have no idea what to do with them. Are they all the same size or are they slightly? They almost look like glass harmonica uh, notes or ceramic insulators, but uh, they look like uh, pots you would put succulents in to me. Solved. Now I have to convince my husband to buy me uh, 12 succulents. <laughs> I mean, this this was an excellent, like, gambit. If you wanted succulents, you'd be like, well, I already have the, I have the pots. Metal studs in exterior, street-facing walls seen all over Geneva, Switzerland. Example in photo. They are about four to five inches from the ground, tapered towards the wall. Styles differ a little. Some have flatter ends. <sighs> Maybe for, like, enforcement, like it, it's the end of a bar or something? seems really deep into the wall though. I was with a, the, a surveyor from Germany here. These are used for height measurements, so-called leveling. A leveling rod is placed on top of these metal studs, which have a defined height. Ah, using an optical level, you can determine height differences. Retired Texas surveyor here, we call it a benchmark. Hadn't seen one like that. Neat stuff. Very cool. I would have never thought of that unless I'd seen like a bunch of them all kind of around the same height. Mother-in-law left this behind after a move. It was plastic wrapped, never used. It has a mesh cover, small holes, and a plunger that presses into neither of them. Wife and I are very confused. It, it's it's like the, the world's smallest like juicer. We need a banana for scale. But you yeah, know, it looks kind of like a juice juicer for like a very tiny lemon or garlic or something. Amazon.com something something strainer. Ah, reusable built injector. What? Solved. Also, she paid $37 for this plastic crap. That's crazy. So I, I had to look this up because I, I just got too curious. Uh, it's a tea strainer. Uh, also, the $37 for two of them which explains why there was one that was uh, that was not used and still in the plastic wrap. Unlocks every layer of aroma and flavor. Uh, this isn't sponsored. I, I think it's stupid expensive too. But apparently it's, it's designed so that tea leaves float around inside of it. And yeah, the plunger just forces all of the leaves or whatever you have in, inside of it. It apparently also works with some fruits and things like that uh, all the way to the bottom.